Hello, and welcome back to the Broad Street Boys. Um, it's just me today. Uh, I have a very specific thing I'm going to talk about today, and that's just going to be the Eagles. Um, just going to warn anybody, uh, if you don't like the use of language, I would click off this right now, because it's coming. Um, I live by the Pat McAfee thought that if you, like, we all curse in our, our regular everyday lives, so why sugarcoat it, right? I mean, this is crazy. Um, me as an Eagles fan, I consider not even wearing the sweatshirt. I don't know how I could wear the sweatshirt today. Um, it's really only for this video. Um, but I'm only going to talk about the Eagles, and it might get bad. Just prepare yourself. It'll, no, it'll, be, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, but yeah, so yesterday, Eagles dropped another game to the Giants, um, where they did, in fact, play all their starters for the first half. Um, all the starters that could play, like so, like DeAndre Swift had this flu thing going on, so he was out. Uh, Dante Smith had an injury; he was out. Um, but everybody else played, and um, we got blown out again. Um, I could tell you for a fact that I knew for the first half I knew what play was coming, and I am quite literally sitting my ass on a couch and watching a game through a screen. Um, so I can only imagine what. Uh, the guy had the first name of Wink on the Giants. His uh, the, the the defensive coordinator had the first name of Wink, and we couldn't figure it out. Um, this team is honestly the most embarrassing thing I've had to go through as this as like a fan, because like yes, obviously the Sixers lost twenty eight games in a row, and also lost twenty six games in a row in one season. Like that, yes, that's embarrassing. But you kind of expect them to do that. So, like, I wasn't as embarrassed of that. It's actually funny now. Like, everybody around here just laughs about it. No one is going to laugh about this. I don't think I don't think the Eagles players or coaches, like, think about this. No one is, no one is laughing. Like, this is awful. I can't believe this is happening. Like, this is completely nuts. I've never seen a collapse like this. I mean, obviously the Phillies collapsed this past fall. But guess what? Fuck you. I don't care. That is a completely different collapse than this. The Phillies lost two games. They didn't lose five out of six. Three of which to losing teams. Like, I don't get it. I don't, and guess what? I don't consider the freaking Seahawks a winning team. Sorry. We lost to Drew Locke. That's not a winning team. Sorry. Uh, I don't care if they almost made the playoffs. F you. I don't, I, I don't care. Um, we lost to the Giants. Um, where Tyrod Taylor, for some reason, looked like a stud. Looked like Patrick Mahomes dropping dimes. Um, Saquon Barkley looked like Emmett Smith out there, you know, killing us. Um, our defense is atrocious. I think we should give the play calling ability back to Sean Desai because the fact that Hassan Reddick is dropping back into coverage and he had 10-plus sacks last year and was a pro bowler is embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. I don't get it. What? That's like saying I, I, I that's like having TJ Watt who is going to probably going to be a Hall of Famer based, based off stats cuz he has not done well in the playoffs not his fault but that's like dropping him back into coverage 25% of the time would you ever do that he's your best player on your defense no you would never do that ever i don't care how bad you think your linebackers are you don't drop him into coverage the first play of the game is a was a pivotal one look cuz listen I've honestly had my doubts. Everybody has had their doubts coming into this week. But for some reason, I think everybody can agree that we all felt oddly okay about this, just how the players were talking, how Nick Sirianni was talking. Like, we were all like, okay. Like, like we not, not that we feel 100% confident, because this team gives you no reason to feel 100% confident, but the fact that, I don't know, I, I felt a good vibe going into this. I mean, not it, it's obviously not a win you're in, but it's a win in... You, you get a little closer, you give yourself a little momentum. We have zero of that. Zero. No momentum, no chemistry, no nothing. I, I didn't get the... What was the point of even playing yesterday to win? Like, why even start your starters if they were going to suck anyway? You know what I mean? Like, why why would you even play them? Um, and sure, you can give the whole thing about if Dallas loses to the worst team in the league, you know, what happened. And yes, they were losing at one point. It was it was 10-7... to 7, um, whatever they picked off to act twice or whatever but it's just so this team is so frustrating and i don't know what's wrong with every like with every single skill player i feel like we've like regressed aj brown can't stop on the ball yes he got hurt and i'm glad he's okay and it's looking like he's gonna play but i feel like he fumbles every other game jalen hurts sucks i don't know if he's hurt which i'm gonna hope he's hurt 
but he has regressed dramatically. And I'm not going to say it because I'm not putting that thought in my head that this is another Carson Wentz situation and he had one good year and you paid him, now he's going to suck. Like, I'm trying not to think of it. But I'm like a regression like that is nuts. It's crazy. And it's got to be the coordinator. And I've never seen a coach um, st- take a step back like this. Like Nick Sirianni, even, I don't even know, going into that San Francisco game, even the first quarter of that San Francisco game, Nick, we were like, my God, this Nick Sirianni guy's a stud. Like, he's awesome. Like, yeah, we, we, we have, like, up to that point, we haven't been, like, playing perfect football, but who cares? We're winning, right? But we can't think about that now. We've lost f- five out of six. And we're going into the playoffs, going into Tampa Bay, which we should win. This is a very doable game. This is the worst division by a long shot, like in a long time. Probably ever since we made, the, <laughs> ever since the, when uh, Jalen Hurts made his first, um, um, uh, no, not Jalen Hurts, sorry. Uh, ever since Carson Wentz got his concussion against um, uh, the, the uh, Seahawks when, when, when we made it in with one game above 500, I think. That this is the worst division since then, and it is absolutely embarrassing that one team has to go like host a playoff. Game. Like this is nuts, and I can't, I can't, I can't believe this. This team is absolutely embarrassing to the city, and I can't. It's really hard to watch them. And I completely forgot to to, to, to post a video about two weeks ago, but I'll, I'll say it again. I haven't had fun at all watching this team. I don't even care. Through ever since the only fun time I can I can remember is Jalen Hurts running it up the middle to beat the Bills. That's the only fun time. Even even before then, when even when, when we were nine and one going into the Bills game, like yes, we were winning, but I was like, this team is so much better than this. Like like, why are we not playing up to our capabilities? Blah blah blah. Like I had no fun watching this team this year. This this team wasted my Sundays. Every single week they wasted my Sundays. I could have been doing so much, so many other things. But this team wasted my Sundays, and I am so over it. Like, this team is so embarrassing. It's awful. The Seahawks game was an absolute atrocious showing. It's the Seahawks. It's Drew Locke. What the hell are we doing? Why do we keep losing to backup quarterbacks? I don't get it. I, are, you, are you afraid of them? Like, Baker Mayfield was a backup last year. Does that mean we're going to get blown out by them? Like, I feel like it's coming. Like, this is absolutely terrible. The offense is ass. It's terrible. Like, why is our offense so bad? I'll get to the defense in a minute. That's a whole different story. It's a whole different segment. I, I can't even deal with this defense. But this offense looks awful. I don't know who's calling, who's calling the plays, Brian Johnson or Nick Sirianni, or if they're helping each other. They both blow. Like, get them both out of here. I'm so over, I'm so over this stupid-ass team. And it's hard. Like, I don't want to fire Nick. I really don't. Because... He he is. I, I saw a stat today. I think it's like thirty-four and seventeen. What when he's here? Like yes, he is. He has been. He's been awesome when he's here. Taking out the, these past six games, he's been great. But ever since, I feel like the 49ers took our soul. Like, and I, and I feel like it has something mentally to to do with that. Like the 49ers took our soul, no matter what. Like, it was. It's honestly ever since <laughs> Nick Sirianni was talking shit to the um. Chiefs fans, and all of a sudden we started to suck, like awful. Like we almost lost the Bills. I mean, we did lose. We lost to the Niners, Cowboys, Seahawks, Giants, Cardinals. Like that's embarrassing. That is absolutely embarrassing. And we barely beat the Giants on Christmas Day when we were up twenty to three at halftime. So this is just absolutely embarrassing. So just just watching this team right now is so it's embarrassing. And I'm going to keep saying that word, but it, it is fucking embarrassing. And I cannot watch it. Like, it's really hard to watch. And the defense is so bad. I touched on a little bit. Why is Hassan Reddick in coverage? Why is Hassan Reddick in coverage? What are we doing? Why is Josh Sweat in coverage? Josh Sweat had 10 plus sacks and he hasn't had a sack in, uh, in eight weeks. What are we doing? I don't get it. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm so, I'm so over this team. It's, it's, an abomination, and, and the and the the thing I'm so fascinated though, like yes, I'm pissed, like I'm over it, like I I really could be yelling into this mic, but I don't want to be yelling into this mic. I'm trying to keep my keep my cool, but like it's weird because I don't know what's wrong. No one knows what's wrong. Like I don't know what's wrong with this team, and it's funny. Every single insider that we have, Sal Pal, you can keep going to Ruben Frank. No one has any idea what's wrong. That's why this is fascinating. Because it could be a combination of everything, or it's something so little that is bothering the whole team. 
but we have no idea. I can't make any assumptions. No one can. No professional can. I'm not even a professional, and no professionals can make any assumptions. How can I make an assumption? You know what I mean? Like, that's why it's so frustrating as a fan, because, like, you want to, like, like, for me, it, for, for everybody, it was really easy to shit on Carson Wentz with his ass, because obviously he was terrible. But, like, I can shit on Jalen Hurts, but it's obviously not entirely his fault, so I can't shit on Jalen Hurts. But I also can't shit on Sirianni, because I know Brian Johnson is helping him. But I can't shit on Brian Johnson, because if the defense can, can't get any stops, then how the hell, then how the hell is the offense going to do anything? Like, I, this team... There's something wrong with it, and I'm not quite sure what, what's wrong with it. If I had to pick a favorite player right now, it'd be A.J. Brown, and I don't care what any of you say, A.J. Brown might be the one light on this team. The fact that he, he went out and spoke to the media, like, he, he put all of his chips in Nick's corner. That's also why, why I was excited for this game, because I felt like the team needed A.J. to come out. A.J. is, your, is one of your stars. And the fact that he didn't speak to the media for two weeks is huge. They kept going to Devontae. They kept going to Jalen Hurts, asking him, what's wrong with AJ? AJ finally comes out and just says he doesn't want to be negative, which I actually respect. Because if he was negative, he'd probably cuss out the whole team like I'm doing right now, which is not... I don't want to be doing this, by the way. I don't want to be cussing out the whole team. I actually love, like, like praising the team more than cussing them out. Like, I, I love enjoying Philadelphia sports, but I am not enjoying it at all. So this is this is why this video is happening. But the fact that AJ took it upon himself to be like, okay, I can't talk to you after the games because I'll cuss out the whole team. Like I, I, I get it. And the fact that he was well-minded enough to actually speak to the media, I thought was impressive on on like a personal standpoint for him. Um, because I'm not sure in in Tennessee he would have done that. Because in Tennessee he was similar to this. No, I wouldn't say emotional. He was, I mean, obviously emotional, but like he was, he was just very. I I don't know the word, but he was very much like that. And the fact that he he kind of took it on himself, be like, okay, I'm not I'm not gonna save the team, but I'm gonna help the team by explaining my standpoint on what's happening. I, I think it's a big deal for not him, not, not only him, but the whole team, because um, it takes a lot of pressure off of Devonte. Devonte, I mean, Devonte Smith's a stud, but I mean, it's tough when you have to answer questions about one of your teammates and you you don't really know what to say because you don't want to like spoil it or whatever. Um, and I think. What 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 really frustrated me the most? Um, I was watching NBC Sports Philadelphia. Um, excuse me. Oh, shit. Uh, excuse me. Um, I was watching NBC Sports Philadelphia, and I um was watching Nick Sirianni give that interview, and I was I was expecting myself to be like, not like, oh my gosh, we're gonna be okay, like whatever. But I I wanted to see some emotion, and Nick is very good at emotion. We we've learned for the past two three years so i was expecting some sort of motion and all we got was him leaning on the thing and just like speaking very monotonely which is not what he usually does but he like just does he kind of talks like this and i was expecting i don't know not like a more fired up like give give us a little bit of hope you don't need to tell us like oh we're gonna win next week but like Give us a little bit of hope. Say that this game was unacceptable or something. Give us something. We need something. Something positive. Like, I don't care what it is. And he gave us nothing. He 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 gave us just dumbass answers. Like everything that we kind of expected, I guess, at this point. Because that's all he does. All, all, all he does is... It's annoying because he, he's like, it all starts with me. He keeps... that's Those are the words he keeps saying. It all starts with me. How long can it all start with you, and then we us not fire you? Like, does he want to be fired? Like, if he keeps on saying this, it's almost like he wants to be fired because it's not with it's not entirely on him, but he's taking it as a coach. Like, it's just annoying me. It's annoying me that he doesn't. It obviously he cares. He just doesn't look like he cares. Like, you, it's body language. It's the same thing with AJ Effing Brown that that Nick has talked about before. It's body language. Like, to show some, to show me something. I, I'm begging for something. Like this team is so it's it's one of the harder watches I, I've I've had as as a Philadelphia sports fan. Like this team is rough, and I'll go back to all the all the collapses, you know, including the 2023 Phillies, 2022 Phillies, um, Sixers against the Celtics up three two. Um, you can keep going down the line. Like this is one of the worst regular season collapses I've ever been a part of. Like this is absolutely embarrassing. Like. The fact that the 49ers ripped your heart out that easily 
in three quarters. And I say three quarters because in that first quarter, if you remember, they were in the negatives for every single category. Like, like they didn't gain a yard in, in the first quarter. So, th- so the fact that it only took you f- three quarters to be like, oh my god, maybe we kind of suck. Or like, maybe we need to change. Like, the fact that that's a thing is embarrassing. Like, like how does it take three quarters to make you think that? You know, like, what, what are we doing? Um, and Jalen Hurts needs to play better. Plain and simple. Um, and and I, listen, I get it. Your coordinator sucks. And your coach sucks, possibly. Whoever is giving you the plays, it, it's terrible. But I felt like Jalen Hurts coming into this year. Like, am, am I wrong when I say that when Jalen Hurts first began in the NFL and on, and on the Eagles, he was brought in to be like that running Taysom Hill guy? Where the hell did that guy go? He hardly even runs faster than freaking Hassan Reddick now. And Hassan Reddick's on defense. But then, but then year one, number two, Jalen, was like blowing past people, running through people. Obviously, he's got to be hurt, right? That's the only thing I think of. I think he's hurt. And, I, and I, I just don't think they're disclosing it to the media. Like, he's got to be hurt somewhat. I don't, like, it's it's really weird. And I'm at a loss of words for it. He's got to be hurt. Because I don't know where that guy came from. Because Nick Sirianni, either Brian Johnson broke him, which could be a thing, or he's hurt. Like, and I'm not quite sure what the hell to do about it. Because cause I'm lost. I am lost with this team. Like, I, I am lost. And I think I could speak for the rest of the city when I could say, if you don't pick it up, then we're going to clean house. And regardless, we're cleaning house. But this next game will tell you if Nick Sirianni is going to stay in the city and, and ask the coach of this team. Because I'm, I'm honestly not ready to say bye to, to Nick Sirianni. That's an unpopular opinion. But he's 34 and 17. Um, I've, I mean, in, in, if you think about it, every team needs a good coordinator on both sides of the ball. Um, like, like, like you, you uh, think of Belichick. Yes, Patricia sucks now. I get it, but McDaniel and Patricia were great coordinators. Now, obviously, terrible coaches, but they were really good coordinators. And Bill Belichick is one of the best to do it ever. Um, Sean McVay continues to breed excellence from from the the, the coaching standpoint. Um, so and even Doug Peterson, you know what I mean. And Nick Sirianni had two good coaches no i mean like obviously everybody hates sean and cannon because i feel like he did throw a little bit the the super bowl but i can't none of us can say shit now he just beat us fair and square in philadelphia and shane Steichen almost just took gardner Minshew to the playoffs they were a catch away pretty much because i think they were scoring if that guy catches it they were, they were driving um they were a catch away from the playoffs and the fact that shane Steichen even brought that team there with a really hurt secondary is crazy. That guy, I mean, yes, I don't get, I don't really get why Jonathan Taylor was off the field at that, at that point, but like, like what or what, how, how is Gardner Minshew almost in the playoffs while Jalen Hurst is crawling into the playoffs? Like what is happening? And like a guy like Dallas Goddard said it, it he didn't say this specifically, but how I took it and how the, the the rest of the Philadelphia media took it was that once they clinched the, the uh, playoff berth, they kind of took the foot off the gas. Like, I don't get that. That's dumb. You saw, like, all the whole team saw how important it is to, to have home field. Like, it's just so frustrating to me. And I, it, it's, it's, and it's, again, I've, I know I said this before, but it's not just one person or one player. It's the entire team that's wrong. Um. And I said this in the one that I completely forgot to to post, but who, who, who. but um, this team is is built in a very interesting way. You have all these like veteran players like Fletcher Cox, uh, Brandon Graham, um, Darius Slay starting to get up there. Uh, you can keep going with with Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson. You can keep going, but then you have all these raw players like Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, Keely Ringo. Eli Ricks, um, you can keep going. And we, even, like I like these guys, but they're just so raw and so new to the game that they need to adjust. But there's no, like, there's no, I wouldn't say we have a, super, a superstar on defense. Jalen Carter is awesome. Darius Slay may think he's a superstar in how he speaks to the media, but when you play 10 games, how the hell are you a superstar? 
that's that's my thing. And like the only p- person that I would even consider being a star slash superstar is Hassan Reddick. But when you drop back into coverage, then how the hell is he going to ex- succeed? So it's just so frustrating. And we, so we play Tampa Bay on Monday night, which continues to be that this game is not fun to watch. No one is fun to watch on this team. Um, so we have to watch a Monday night game, the fifth Monday night game that the Eagles have had this year. What the hell? Um, and Joe Buck's going to be doing it. I mean, I th- everything's telling me that we should win. But how the hell are we going to win? We just lost to freaking Tyrod Taylor. We just lost to Kyler Murray and James Conner. We basically lost to James Conner by himself. And we couldn't we couldn't do shit against that defense. Um, we only put up 28 points. And, but but the, the, the funny thing is we needed to put up 28 points to make it close. Um, it's just embarrassing. Like, this team is embarrassing. We, we, we lost to Drew Locke. What are we doing? The only thing that we do have on our side is temp is for Tampa Bay is like Baker is hurt. Like I I I watched that Carolina Tampa Bay game as most of us did because that was the Fox regional coverage around here, and Baker was obviously hurt both his ankle and his ribs. He just looked terrible. And the, I mean the Panthers defense is underrated, but I mean come on, <laughs> nine points is like no no touchdowns. Like what what are we doing? Um, but if I mean if we're completely healthy, then I think we have a shot. But like, if, if we have players playing hurt and don't have a scheme, like, we don't have a damn chance. And if we, and even if we somehow beat the Bucks, if you think we're going to beat the 49ers, you're, you need to get checked out. Because the 49ers hate us and we hate them. The, the, the funny thing is they hate us more. So we're going to get blown out by them. Blown out. In San Francisco, yeah. Miss me on that one. Um, and Another thing I want to say, why... Can collect my thoughts. Why the hell does Jalen Hurts look like he shits himself every time he sees a blitz? It's it's a blitz. You either do a slip screen to the left or right with your running back or with your tight end, or you block the running back and just do crossers. It's not that hard. But when your wide receivers have no um, separation for Jalen Hurts, and then Jalen Hurts is just like running backwards, like already giving up on the play. As soon as he sees... My, my problem is as soon as he sees... The uh, uh, the blitz coming. I feel like he gives up mentally. Like all of a sudden, he sees two guys coming. And he goes, "Oh shit!" Like, like I feel like there's there's whenever I see an extra guy or two coming, I'm like, "Well, it's gonna be a sack or a pick or a fumble or a throwaway slash intentional grounding because that's just what happens here." Um, it looks like he sh- like, like I feel like this team is never prepared coming into these in, into these games. And I, I don't know if I'm the only one that sees this, but no one is prepared. There's not one person I like coming into this game ever that I see prepared. Like I feel like whenever Jalen Hurts sees a blitz, he's like, "Oh my god, they they could bring two more extra people." What? Like like a blitzing is like a normal part of of the defense. Like like the fact that we don't know how to stop a normal part of a defense is embarrassing. And I keep saying that word, but I'm gonna keep saying it. It is embarrassing. Like how do we not do the fact that Marcus Mariota almost looked better than Jalen Hurts the other day was is awful awful um and th- that is that is not me saying that Mario should start over hurts Mario poop but he's a good backup but he I mean whatever like I'm so over defending this team because I can't I can't no one no one can I, I'm, I'm over defending this team this is one of the biggest collapses in Philadelphia sports history in the regular season and we all just witnessed it lost five out of six games zero hope zero like chemistry on this team i feel like I feel like nobody likes each other i feel like i don't even care what they say they're saying that that they believe in sirianni but then for some reason have a players only meeting you know what that leads to cleaning house <laughs> that's what a players only meeting leads to and i saw ron jaworski say something that i completely agree with on nbc sports philadelphia he said that you have a players meeting and you you, you pretty much go in there first like with with one thought and with like one thought in mind, like oh we need to fix this, but then a players only meeting can very easily quickly spark into seventeen different problems and then none of them getting solved and everybody just venting. How does that help anybody? How does that help anybody? And obviously it didn't work this game. We suck and AJ Brown looked like he tore his ACL, but happily he didn't. But he fumbled again. Jalen hurts through another pick. Like like you can keep going down the line. 
And it's so awful to watch as a fan. Like, I've had no fun. I've had no fun. <laughs> I'm good. Like, honestly, if we lose, it's okay. I, I said this to my dad the other day. I've had so much more fun watching every other team in football, period. College football or even NFL football. I've had so much more fun watching every other team play other than the Eagles. I don't enjoy this team. Period. Like I've and, I, and I've really tried. Like I like I I really do watch every single down. I've watched every single down to the last game. But like, it comes to a point where, as a fan, you're like, damn. Like, what do I do? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it's just frustrating. And I don't. And as a fan, I don't know how to, how to deal with it. Um, because I posted this on, on a TikTok um, recently. Um, ever since 2022, it's everything's just gone downhill like bad like it's been rough like the Sixers losing to the Heat it was 3-2 Heat winning but like I like we like we were at home should have won that game should have won the seven lost uh Phillies Phillies <laughs> I I've, the, the funny thing is I don't even blame the Phillies 2022 because that team wasn't even supposed to do anything so the fact that they even made it was awesome um and then, but the same day, the Union lost to Gareth Bale <laughs> by himself, pretty much. Um, and then the Eagles Super Bowl, awesome, <laughs> great, uh, bottom five moment of my life. Um, Phillies again, or sorry, sorry, let's let's go in order. Sixers again, um, Game Seven to the Celtics, not even a showing, or it was three two us going into Philadelphia, and you lose that game. Um. The Sixers are have a whole different type of hatred in my in my heart, but you, you you have to understand like I I say I hate them, but I hate them because I love them. Like th- like these teams are my life, not not are my life, but like like I I I think about this all the time. I love thinking about the scenarios of what we could do in the off season. But when I I honestly I have to learn to lower my expectations for every team because they're probably not gonna meet them. Um, so. And then, last but not least, with the freaking collapse now happening, and probably the Sixers going out in the second round again. So here we are. That's that's that, that's honestly where I'm at. And we we uh, witnessed collapse last uh, last fall with the Phillies, and now we just witnessed the collapse with the Eagles. So here we are. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of some other stuff. Um, this team is just frustrating, and I'm trying to think of. I'm gonna do a whole another NFL playoff preview sort of thing. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get Ty on that because he's really good with that. Um, he's also a Rams fan, so and they're in the playoffs, which is which will make it fun. Um, and he just knows a shit ton about football in general, which is awesome. Um, yeah. So listen, I I have nothing else for this episode. I really just want to get up and throw this chair out the window because of this team. Um, this team is embarrassing. Like if if like like they they are an embarrassment to this sport. The fact that they just didn't try yesterday so um and i tried to not make this in the morning and i tried not, not to make this <laughs> immediately after the game because i would have said many different things um but just to recap i don't want sirianni going right now um just because he's 34 and 17 and i feel like the guys actually like him according to aj and to kelsey um so i'm i'm really trying to stay positive but it's really hard to not like it's really hard to but um Go birds, I guess. I, I yeah. Um, I can't believe I just did twenty eight minutes of just straight ranting. That is really funny. Um, but thank you guys so much for the support on TikTok, by the way. But just before I get out of here, um, thank you so much for the support on TikTok. I currently have one going at ten thousand views, which is super appreciated. Um, this is this is just like honestly like like, like a little project for me, just a personal thing, uh, just because it's fun. Um, so it's just, but just see that everybody's liking all the content and stuff, really. It's really pretty cool. Um, and I'm going to try to consistently go back to uh, Instagram as well a little bit more. Um, I've I've tinkered with the Sixers game day thing. I think I, I like this one. I'm going to try to change some other stuff. Um, but yeah, so thank you all so much for the support. Um, uh, let, let, let's just hope the Eagles beat the uh, Bucks. But if they don't, they don't. Um, hang in there because I'm going to try. So you guys all have, all have to do. Um, happy Monday night. I'll probably see you sometime else this week because I'm going to try to do a uh, NFL one. Um, but yeah, me, myself, <laughs> Jake, and Caleb wish you all the best. Um, have a great rest of your day, and um, 
We'll see you in the next episode. Go birds, I guess.